Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and welcome to the 135th episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. All right, and to start off, I wanted to talk about jailbreaking and some news on the subject. But first of all, if you haven't seen my last episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors and you want more information on jailbreaking, be sure to check out that video. I go over everything from what a semi-tethered or semi-untethered jailbreak is to when an untethered jailbreak may be released. So if you're at all confused, just be sure to watch that video. And I recommend actually watching it prior to this video. And I'll have a link to that video down below in the more info. All right, now let's start off with the news in this episode. Last Friday, Friday night, Posix Ninja, former leader of the Chronic Dev team, tweeted a follow-up to his recent announcement where he revealed his plans to develop an untethered jailbreak on his own for future versions of iOS 7. And although the vulnerabilities exploited by the Evasion untethered iOS 6 jailbreak utility went virtually untouched in both Apple's 6.1.1 and 6.1.2 firmware releases when the company issued iOS 6.1.3 to the public, the minor update patched the jailbreak. Well now, POSIX Ninja, who's been instrumental in the development of a number of past jailbreak utilities, including both Absinthe and Green Poison, informed his followers that he's discovered yet another exploit that will presumably be used in the development of his far-off jailbreak utility. Now the reason why I say far-off is because he's already confirmed that he won't release the utility until the days of iOS 7.0.x or even 7.1.x, because of course he wants to save those exploits so they can be used for more firmware versions as well as for more devices in the future once Apple releases them. And that only makes sense because if Apple doesn't know which exploits they plan on using, they simply can't patch them. And oftentimes, Apple isn't even aware of the exploits that these hackers discover and use for their jailbreak utilities. Now, of course, just be sure to stay tuned to this series, my YouTube channel in general, and Best Tech Info. I'll keep you guys completely covered on the status of jailbreaking, including both the Evaders and POSIX Ninja's efforts to create new untethered jailbreak utilities for iOS 7. And like I mentioned earlier, before going over the jailbreak news, if you're at all confused or you want more information, just be sure to check below. I'll have a link to my previous episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors, where I go in depth on the subject, and I'll also have links to a few resources that I find very valuable, including a couple of articles from Evasion Jailbreak, which I help manage. So just be sure to check it out. All right, moving on. According to a new report from DigiTimes, Apple will allegedly begin mass production for their fifth generation iPad sometime between July and August of this year. And of course, this new report contradicts earlier rumors of Apple releasing the next generation 9.7 inch iPad as early as late spring or even later this month. And although Apple has previously followed a mostly linear iOS product refresh that occurs once every 12 months or so, last year the company released two full-sized iPad models, one in March and the other in November. So in light of that fact, it's entirely possible that the release of the fourth generation iPad in November upset Apple's previous spring iPad refresh timeframe, causing the fifth generation device to be released later than initially thought. Now the new forthcoming iPad is said to bring both a thinner and lighter profile while also adopting a more iPad mini-esque design, including the iPad mini's narrower side bezel. Now the mock-up on the screen now is based entirely upon the idea that the full-sized iPad will adopt a look and feel similar to its smaller counterpart, the iPad mini. And speaking of which, next up, a French site named Nowhere Else recently posted a pair of images of what are allegedly the front screen panel of Apple's unannounced fifth generation iPad. And in alignment with previous rumors and leaked rear shell images, the new set of photos reveal an improved design over the current full-sized iPad, featuring a narrower side bezel compared to 9.7 inch iPad models, which is actually what I was just discussing in the last report. And in addition to sporting a smaller side bezel to increase the iPad's ease of use, the device is said to also feature a back casing that's near identical to the iPad mini's incredibly appealing aluminum shell. Now, while some may question whether these images are simply of Apple's 7.9 inch iPad mini's tablet, a clever individual on Mac Rumors forums took one of the leaked images and compared it to Apple's stock images of the current full sized iPad and the iPad mini. Now, to ensure that the iPads were proportioned correctly, the individual adjusted the size of the stock images to align with the home button, and the result is on the screen now. And of course, I'll keep you guys completely up to date on any and all rumors surrounding Apple's next generation iPad. All right, and finally, a new set of images of what are allegedly parts for Apple's next generation iPhone have been publicized by a Japanese parts vendor named iLab Factory. 
Now, if authentic, iLab notes that these components could very well belong to the much rumored low cost iPhone that Apple may announce alongside the iPhone 5S or whatever the next generation full cost iPhone may be called. And interestingly, the report highlights a new push switch flex cable that houses three buttons which will run along the device's side, similar to the current iPhone's volume and silent toggle controls. However, instead of featuring a switch to control whether the device is in silent mode like previous iPhone generations have, the new component simply has three buttons. Now, This new and odd configuration of the flex cable suggests that Apple's upcoming iPhone, whether it's the iPhone 5S or its rumored cheaper counterpart, might sport a push button instead of the traditional mute switch that iPhone owners have become so accustomed to over the past six and a half years. And on a separate but related note, iLab points out that the vibration mechanism used in the part that's on the screen now utilizes a new dual head design, which differs from the mechanism used on Apple's current iPhone 5. However, the motivation behind the change remains unclear, but it's likely that it will have something to do with improved performance. And finally, iLab has also posted images of two other components that reveal little information other than the fact that one of these parts uses a significantly longer cable than the one found on the corresponding iPhone 5 part. Furthermore, although the layout of the front camera flex cable on the screen now is nearly identical to that of the one used for Apple's iPhone 5, the leaked part is apparently missing the previously integrated microphone and a number of sensors that were present on the part's predecessor. And this radical simplification of the flex cable may ironically suggest a significant internal component design change. And of course, just like with the fifth generation iPad and news pertaining to the next untethered jailbreak utility, just be sure to stay tuned for everything related to Apple's upcoming iPhone 5S. I will keep you guys completely covered. All right, and if you wanna enter into my new $100 Amazon gift card giveaway, just be sure to rate this video up and hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release new videos and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. Once your comment's posted, you'll be automatically entered to win. And as I mentioned in last week's episode, I will be giving away a brand new unlocked iPhone 5 in the near future. And the reason why I'm actually going to give away a new iPhone is because a while ago I made a deal with you guys that if I was chosen to participate in Google's Project Glass Explorer program, I'd give away an iPhone. And as some of you already know, I was one of the few who was lucky enough to be selected. And I will give the iPhone 5 away as soon as I have glass and make my first video on the device. So just be sure to stick around for that. Now onto the question of the day. Let me know in the comment section or on Best Tech Info whether or not you guys plan on getting Apple's next generation iPad. And don't forget to be updated more often, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and add me in one of your circles inside of Google+. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.